Pretty powerful stuff. Maybe the choir could work on that for next week in Aramaic. I'm not sure I understood any of it. The English words had to have been up there, but it was uh, just kind of brings some power, a different language to those very words. So today, as we continue our sermon series, and we're breaking down and looking at different parts of the Lord's Prayer, we're moving on this week, and we're talking about uh, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Very, very powerful words when we speak those words, when we pray those words each and every week. I was so proud of some of you today when I started praying the Lord's Prayer. Some of you remember that we were slowing down. Some of you didn't, but once we adjusted gears, everybody <coughs> slowed down so we could concentrate on those very, very powerful words. The great writer and uh, pastor Frederick Buechner says, what are we saying when we, when we pray those words? When we really say, if we're really praying to God and we're saying, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, what do we mean when we say those words? Because they're easy to pray, we do it every week, but what, do we, what are we actually seeking from God? In fact, I used the word bold at the beginning because when I was reading what Beaton had to say this week, I, he reminded me that often in, in churches, especially the Anglican church, when they pray this Lord's Prayer, they say those words before it. They say, let us boldly pray this prayer. And if you're going to boldly pray it, then that, that even takes more depth and more meaning into these words that we're talking about. It gives us something to think about. We should not take this prayer lightly when we pray it. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This ends the, the first half of the Lord's Prayer. It ends the part where we're seeking out to God, where we're looking at God's presence and seeking God's presence among us before we move on to, to a different thing in the rest of the prayer. And in this piece here, when we say, you know, let, let your kingdom come here, have you ever thought about what would happen, what would stay, what would stand, what would fall if God's kingdom did come today? Who would be welcomed in this kingdom come here on earth? Who would be surprised by the kingdom come here on earth? It is boldness indeed to speak these words. It's like letting a tiger out of the cage. Do we really believe these words or are they something we just spout every week? You see, the kingdom come here on earth does something for us. We may not have realized it before, but sometimes it's so easy in our faith journey to think about the kingdom of heaven as something far off, something distant, something away from us. But this prayer reminds us that, that as the kingdom of God comes, it comes here to earth. It's a full integration of heaven and earth for us. It's a bringing them together. Heaven and earth are not separate, but interlocked in this beautiful vision of the kingdom of God. As we think about that, the kingdom message is for our time, it's for our space. It's not just about some other kingdom to come someday. It's about the kingdom of God being among us right now. And so when Jesus taught his disciples to pray this way, it wasn't because he was teaching them some new spiritual principle, some new prayer to learn, but he was teaching them something. And I think, Joe, you really nailed it in the children's message. It's just a prayer not of just religious or spiritual connotations, this is a prayer for action by us. This is a prayer that invites us into making the kingdom of God visible here on earth. It invites us into participating in making sure the kingdom of God happens here on earth. And so it's a very powerful prayer. It's no wonder Jesus said to his disciples, as you go forward from this point, as you move on your faith journey, pray this prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. That is a, is a powerful prayer for God to act, but it's also a powerful prayer for his disciples to act. Each and every day if we would pray this prayer and then do our best to live this prayer out, what a difference it could make in the world around us. And the disciples believed it. They believe that the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that in that event, in the event of that life, death, and resurrection, the kingdom of God was coming on earth and coming among us. And so do we believe it? Do we believe the kingdom of God is here? 
Are we acting like it? I'm sure the disciples face some tough questions, and I know we face some tough questions. If we believe the kingdom of God is here, then why do bad things still happen? Why is there injustice? Why are all those things that Job talked about? Why is there hunger? Why is there guilt? Why is there evil? You see, they did not dodge those questions. They kept living out their faith, and they kept doing something else. They kept praying this prayer. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And they began to live as disciples, trying to make that vision a reality. They tried to show others how to live so that the kingdom of God could become a reality here. The kingdom of God did come with Jesus, and we know that. It's part of what the scriptures tell us. But John has an amazing way of talking about this. John says that the kingdom of God is already here. It's just not yet what it will be. You see, and part of that is because of us. If we want the kingdom of God to look like the description that Jesus gave us, if we want to look like the way Jesus talked about over and over again in the scripture, then it's our job to do more than just pray the prayer. It's our job to walk the walk and to make the kingdom of God a reality here on earth. Jesus taught his disciples to pray this way, but to pray and to act. To pray and to act for the redemption of the world, for the defeat of evil, for heaven and earth to be united here on earth, for God to be in all. And we must be prepared, if we're going to pray this prayer, to also live out and to act this prayer. To break it, make it a reality breaking into the world around us. Donald Crable wrote a book called The Upside Down Kingdom, and he said, the kingdom of God looks like this. The first shall be last. The exalted will be humble. The humble will be exalted. The sinners are forgiven. The poor are blessed. The lost are found. The lion lays down with the lamb. That's what the kingdom of God looks like. That's the kingdom of God that, that we're supposed to help build when we pray for that every day. Do you want that kind of a kingdom of God? When you pray this prayer, do you want that kind of a kingdom? God? If you do, what are you doing to make it a reality? You see, the kingdom of God is opposite of worldly kingdoms, and that should serve us as a warning. That should let us re be reminded that, that if we're out building our worldly kingdom, if we're out promoting ourselves, if we're out building ourselves up, if we're out tearing other people down, if we're doing all of those things, we're going the wrong direction. We're going the opposite of the kingdom of God. You see, the kingdom of God de defies conventional wisdom. It defies common sense because they're not signs of the kingdom of God. Or is it common sense to say the poor will become rich and be blessed? Is it common sense to say sinners are forgiven, the lost are the failed? Is it common sense to say, oh, when the kingdom of God is fully present, the lion will lay down with the lamb. There'll be justice for everybody. Is that common sense in the world's eyes? Obviously not. So if we're really going to be the community of faith that God has called us to be, when we say these words, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, are we prepared to make that a reality? Are we prepared to break down those barriers that are around us? Are we prepared to live with love and grace and mercy? You know, Jesus taught over and over again in the scriptures, and he used this phrase over and over again, the kingdom of God is like. And you remember what he said? Did he ever say, oh, the kingdom of God is like, a, oh, this place where everybody's perfect. Oh, the kingdom of God is this place where, oh, we're going to all give what we want. Oh, the kingdom of God is a place where, where those that, that do the most praying will be the most exalted. Now, Jesus said things like, the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. It's like yeast that, that leavens the whole bread. It's like a hidden treasure. It's like a pearl that you seek. You sell everything you've got to seek that one pearl. That one pearl that, that is the beauty of the kingdom of God. Jesus continued to tell us those things over and over again. He said the kingdom of God 
in some ways is small and easy to miss. That's what he's saying. In some of those ways, we can miss it. And yet he's saying something else. He's saying it has great power. It has great worth. This amazing thing we call the kingdom of God. Do we really want it to be here on earth? Are we ready for that? Are we ready for that kind of a change among us? It's the opposite of what many of us will ever expect. It's so different. It, it's a kingdom of God that's, that's founded on grace and love and open to all. Jesus says it over and over again with his stories. Unfortunately, this kingdom of God is not here yet. And why? I mean, it was coming 2,000 years ago. Why isn't it here yet? I'm not positive. I don't have the answer. I do know something. That maybe we're not living out this prayer we pray. Maybe we're not living out the discipleship that Jesus called us to. Maybe those are parts of the reasons. Maybe, just maybe, it's like another parable that Jesus told. It was the parable of the talents, remember? And do you remember what the one that had the least talent did? He buried them. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe we haven't had enough faith. We prayed the prayer, but we haven't had enough faith, and so we buried the talents. We've hung on to it for ourselves. We can say, if I can just get in the door, I've got enough to get me in the door. I can't worry about others. Maybe that's what we've done. I don't know. I do know that we're called to live out this kingdom of God each and every day. When we pray this prayer, we're to live this prayer, we're to act out this prayer. Are we doing that? Are we living out this prayer and helping the kingdom of God come about? Because that's what we're called to do. It's up to us to pray this prayer. But it's also up to us to live this prayer. We can only truly pray this prayer from the depths of our being if we mean it. And if we're prepared to live it and to become kingdom bearers. Do you bear the kingdom of God to all you meet? I mean, when they talk to you, when they hear your words, when they read your words, when they know what you've said, and they say, oh, this person, this person right here is bearing the kingdom of God. You know, they, they don't have to uh, put down other people. They don't have to uh, talk bad about others. They don't have to show racism. They don't have to show lies and deceit. Oh, no, this person is a kingdom bearer. I want what they have for me. Are we doing that? Are we becoming a community of healers? Because that's what we're called to do. And there's all kinds of healing that needs to happen. All kinds of brokenness in this world that we can help overcome. Are we praying, God, make us a community of healers? Are we praying, God, make us a place for the broken? You see, that's what the kingdom of God is like. It's a place for the broken to come to be healed. To the broken feel welcome here in our community of faith. We're praying it by will be done, God. Right here, are we becoming healers? Are we welcoming the, the broken with our arms wide open and saying, come on in, we have a place for you. We're called to be a, a retuned orchestra playing kingdom music. I found that phrase somewhere and I really like that. Because we're, we're so far off tune in the way we live our lives as Christians sometimes. We're so far off key in the way we, we, we serve as discipleship. If you want to ever know what it's like to be a, be a Christian and living off key, listen to me sing sometime. You'll get the message. Because the way I sing is the way sometimes we live when we fail to be on key as a disciple. So we're asking God through this prayer, retune us, God. Put us in the right key. Let us sing. No, let us not be flat. But let us sing with gusto, and let us live with gusto, the kingdom of God in our lives. Let us sing the song until the world takes up our song. Let us be bold. Let us sing the song of the kingdom of God. And let us live so we believe it's our job not to wait for it to come, but to make it visible to the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.